In this video series, we are going through the spam filtering functionality available in Exchange 2013 RTM. So far, we discussed the installation of anti-spam agents and sender filtering. Today, we discuss recipient filtering. Our agenda includes the setup of a recipient block list, blocking recipients not present at the address book, target configuration, and testing recipient filtering using Telnet. Recipient filtering allows us to set up a recipient block list. Emails addressed to these recipients are rejected. Most often, this list is used for mailboxes that are only intended for internal use. All configuration is done using the recipient filter config commandlets. To turn the filter on or off, we set the enabled parameter to true or false. This enables the filter itself. However, we still need to enable the features we want to use. The recipient block list is enabled by setting block list enabled to true. Next, we add recipient addresses to the blocked recipients list. Check part 1 of this video series to learn about working with lists from the shell. For example, this is how I add two recipients to the current list. Use remove to delete entries from the list and null to clear the list altogether. The most useful recipient filtering feature is rejecting recipients not present at the address book. We switch this on using recipient validation enabled. If recipient validation is not enabled, Exchange accepts the email, but then finds out that it cannot be delivered to any mailbox. This causes our Exchange to generate an NDR. Rejecting the email at the recipient filter is much more effective and eliminates these NDRs. Rejecting invalid recipients is very useful, but may expose an organization to direct reharvesting attacks. Such an attack allows a spammer to quickly discover all our email addresses. We can protect our system from such an attack using targeting. This introduces a time delay to each SMTP error response, slowing down senders on each incorrect recipient. The slowdown renders a direct reharvesting attempt impractical. Targeting is enabled by default, so normally we don't have to worry about it. The default delay is 5 seconds and is configured at the receive connector. Get receive connector returns the list of connectors receiving emails. The one handling internet emails directly is of course listening to port 25. Tarpet interval is the property controlling the delay length. Let's change this to 6 seconds. By default, recipient filtering is only enabled for external emails. When testing, you may want to enable this for internal emails by setting internal mail enabled to true. Our last task is to test recipient filtering using Telnet. But before doing that, I will disable the content filter, sender ID and sender reputation. Here, I want to make sure no other filter interferes with the tests. I will also restart the transport service to make sure all changes take effect immediately. Otherwise, it may take some 10 minutes for the settings to go live. We fast forward the video here. First, we test an email that is on our recipient block list. The recipient address is set at the RCPT2 SMTP command. The 
the email is rejected with the response user unknown. Did you time the delay between our last keystroke and the rejection response? This was 6 seconds, our target delay. Let's try a recipient that is not in our address book now. Again, we get a user unknown response. We conclude the third part of our video series here. Today, we configure the recipient block list. Blocked recipients not present at the address book. Checked the target settings and tested recipient filtering using Telnet. In the next part, we continue working with more anti-spam filters. Subscribe to the WinDeveloper YouTube channel for the next part of this video series.